All right, welcome back, guys. It has been a few weeks of disassembly, other projects that are taking a lot of my time, and uh, ordering stuff, waiting for stuff to arrive. I've started to make some progress on the electrical system. Uh, by that I mean the solar system that will power the box. Haven't touched the vehicle's electric system yet. That's this project for probably the very end. And um, what we're going to be doing today is starting to assemble some of the electrical components for the solar system that we can. I still have to wait for the brackets to mount the solar panels to the roof. But before we can really cut wires, certain wires, we have to kind of mount the um, electrical components where they will be so that we can kind of measure uh, our roots and know how to cut them. So we're going to be using this just piece of scrap plywood. Uh, a friend of mine was throwing it away. So uh, we're going to cut it up and fit it into the uh, electrical shed that we're going to be building on the side of the vehicle. And that will be one of three walls that I'll be building to kind of affix things to. We're probably also going to build a little rack of some sort for the four batteries. And once that's in, we can actually start mounting and connecting up some of these things to make sure that the wiring distance all works out. So um, I'm not going to talk a lot in this video, I'm just going to dive into it and uh, yeah, let's get started. Perfect. I'm going to put about two uh, screws through this into the metal behind it just to mount it to the vehicle a bit more sturdily. This is an interior metal wall so I shouldn't need to worry about drilling a hole through it. It's not going to let any rain in. It's already inside. But that'll secure that piece of wood nicely to the metal frame and give me a nice point to mount things to. It's been a few days of demolitions on the uh, interior here and I think today is the day that I finally get the left side cabinet out. So it turns out the bottom cabinets are all kind of aluminum sheet metal welded in place. So I'm going to try to look at my design and see if there's a way where I can leave some of those in, uh, but for sure. The ones in the back here, over on the left hand side, those are going to have to be angle grinded out because at least some of them, because that's where my bed needs to uh, go up and down. The metal cabinet on the right side is going to need to be angle grinded down a bit, but I need to leave some of it there because that's where my freshwater tank is going to go in the exterior cabinet there. So let's see if we can get this cabinet out once and for all. Halfway. This isn't really a one person job. Whew. There it is. This is a beast. This is not a one person job. Okay. 
All right, let's take a look at what we've got now that the cabinets are out. So, this side we already had out, including this little narrow cubby. As I said, this part that sticks out, it's gonna have to go, at least down to couch height, because I have a water tank back there that's gonna fit, but this would block my bed lift. And this entire thing, which is all metal, is all gonna have to go out. <laughs> um, probably all this too. All these lower things seem to be built on aluminum framing. But yeah, now we have the first look at the insulation. They used spray-on foam insulation, which is great, uh, but I'm gonna put a second layer on. And then also a vapor barrier. As you can see, there's no vapor barrier here, so. I'm gonna be putting a layer of Havelock wool along all of these insulated patches. Um, and then I'll put a vapor barrier across that whole thing and then we'll start with the uh, new, you know, more cozy interior paneling. Basically, I'm not gonna have as much storage as, as you would think in such a large vehicle because I wanna do this crazy bed thing. Um, basically, by, by doing the crazy bed thing, I lose two types of storage. I lose the garage, which normally lives under the, the permanent fixed bed. That's a huge amount of storage space. Basically, from this horizontal tape, tape line to the back, all of that down low becomes storage for vans that have a permanently fixed bed in the back. So I'd lose all that storage space. And when beds are permanently fixed, you can run cabinets, small little cabinets along the top in both the back left and back right, possibly even the back center, and those cabinets can hold clothes and stuff. I'm not gonna have any of that because <laughs> I can't have cabinets up there because my bed is actually gonna need to lift up and tuck in up there. And by having my bed come up, I'm gonna have this dinette thing under it, so no storage there either. So basically I'm giving up a lot of storage space to fit this extra seating area, but I think it'll be uh, worth it in the long run. So we're doing a little bit of wiring today. Um, so the, the electrical system that I've got, I actually ordered from Light Harvest Solar, uh, who had a lot of really good feedback on YouTube. And they basically send you a kit with all the stuff that you need to put together your solar system. So I'd already ordered the big stuff that I knew I needed, but to get all the, the lugs and the fuses and the fuse boxes and the wiring and all the other stuff that would have just taken me a long time to put together myself, I went with Light Harvest Solar who put it all together for you, ship you one box with everything in it and instructions on, well, not really instructions, but they give you an electrical diagram to put together. So uh, what we're doing now is we're doing this side. So I've got my four batteries here. So battery one, two, three, four. Those are gonna go on the positive side through a breaker into a distribution block. This is the distribution block. The breakers are here. So I've got four of these. Um, they are 150 amp Eaton breakers uh, with a nice little reset switch there so you can disconnect it when you're working on it. So essentially, the only thing that's really critical to know that Anything coming off your positive side, the wire distance from here all the way to the distribution block, these four wires coming off your battery, the total distance needs to be the same. So let's say you have a you know 20 inch wire with a fuse in the middle. You don't want this, this run to be 22 inches, this one 24 or 28. You want all of these to be the same distance. The same is true over here on the negative side, but we have no uh, fuse on that side, no breakers on that side, just goes straight to the distribution block from the batteries. All right, so this, these wires need to be the same length. The wires going on the negative side don't need to be the same length as the wires going through on the positive side. You just want the loop to be consistent for each battery. That way all the batteries are wired up negative to negative. Uh, through a uniform length that doesn't pull extra energy from one battery at a rate more than the other because another one has greater resistance having to go through a longer cable. 
So these four wires need to be the same length. So in my case, these are gonna be 16 inches. All four of these wires coming from battery one, two, three, four to the distribution block. After that, you wanna keep all your wire lengths as short as possible, but the lengths of each segment are less important. But coming off the batteries to the distribution block on the negative side, all of mine are gonna be 16 inches. That's based on the size of the space in my ambulance to put them, to install them. And on the positive side, they're gonna be a little bit longer uh, just because I have to go a little bit further to get to my distribution block, but it's probably going to be about 20 inches. So that's going to be a 16 inch section here, followed by a shorter um, uh, four inch section to get to the distribution block. So there we go. That's what we're doing today. We're doing this first 16 inch section to the breaker. So let's get started, show you how it's done. Pretty straightforward. So here's our gauge four wire. We've already cut four segments to uh, 16 inches, which is going to be our first step. And then we've got appropriately gauged uh, four uh, number four gauge wire lugs. Basically, I've got this little crimping tool here. So I'm going to strip back just the right amount of uh, cable cover to kind of fit that perfectly. And then to keep that on, we're going to crimp this thing. So that's going to go in there nice and snug. This whole system mounts perfectly into this little hammer tool. You can kind of fit it in just the right spot. And you get it in there nice and snug. Let's get a close up of that. And then you give it a whack with a big hammer. And you want to be confident with this whack. No uh, trepidation. So. so the first whack should do most of the work, but you give it another one, you'll hear it, the sound changes. Yeah, so that, that means there's, there's no more, to, there's nowhere else to go. Now you've got a nice, good, good crimp there. Come on, Panasonic autofocus, you can do it. There we go. And so we're gonna cover this with a, um, a shrink wrap as well to get it nice and, and uh, protected, that seam. So that's two. You want to make sure these crimps are tight. So no loose connections. You're gonna give that a nice tug. If it doesn't come out, you're good. Give it a good tug. Should be really firm. Oh, I missed. I think I still got it. There we go. And it'll leave this nice little impression. Oh, come on, Panasonic, there we go. So you get that nice little impact with a little cross symbol, in this case, the bottom of the hammer. So, yeah. You try to want to make sure your wires are all uh, not like sticking out on the side. Oh, Panasonic, you are just the worst. Come on, figure it out. It's close up now. It's not that difficult, autofocus. So yeah, you want to make sure your wires aren't, twist, uh, aren't sticking off to the side or something like that. You know, so make sure all those little strands are in there. There we go. That's not coming off. And so now we'll just do some heat ring. Heat shrink. Okay, I've now got Panasonic tracking my hand, so it should. No.
Okay, so uh, here's the electrical shed uh, as it exists so far. So I've got four uh, lithium ion batteries here. So they're about 105 watt hours each. That's gonna be about 420 watt hours, give or take. Um, sorry, amp hours. <laughs> or is it watt hours? I always forget. Yeah, amp hours, 105 watt hours, amp hours each. Um, and yeah, they're rigged up uh, to these bus bars over here. These are kind of some fancy bus bars. So I've got the negative leads all going to a negative bus bar, positive leads going through a fuse, uh, which is open as you can see. So we don't have the system fully closed up yet. That's going to this uh, positive bus bar here. And then from the positive side, it comes across over here to another uh, breaker that you can see. So these, these breakers are just gonna allow us to disconnect the system and then that connects into the solar charge controller. So solar charge controller then comes out on the negative going to the battery. That's coming into this negative bus bar. Uh, this negative bus bar has two splits. So one comes up here to this uh, shunt. This will be my battery monitor. Uh, this big cable is gonna run down and connect to the inverter. I haven't set up the inverter at all yet, so that's the negative lead going to the inverter. The other negative one comes back across and goes back into the negative side of the battery. So the battery loop is almost done. You know, I just need to set up the uh, inverter down there somehow. And you'll see I also created this kind of like custom, like wooden shelving system for it. Uh, don't worry about the batteries overheating because A, they don't produce that much heat, uh, I was told, and B, there's also a large gap on the back where they can vent, and this wood has holes um, drilled into the side of it to allow greater ventilation. So it's actually not a solid piece of wood, it's kind of got these large ventilation cutouts uh, on the side and nothing on the back. Um, so then, um, we've got this little fuse box here. This is going to connect to the photovoltaics, the solar panels. So the positive is going to run over here. Uh, that's going to connect straight to this somehow. So I might have to lengthen this cable, but that's fine. Um, and then the negative will just go straight up. That'll, that'll go through the roof onto the into the three uh, solar panels that I have. I haven't installed them yet. I want to clean the roof and paint it. Uh, and design a roof rack system before I actually install the solar panels. But until then, I'll just have the solar panels like <laughs> sitting out on the field connecting to make sure it all works properly. Um, and then, yeah, the inverter system will also uh, need to be looped back up to this positive bus bar uh, with one of these large heavy duty cables. And then finally, um, there is a kind of AC to DC uh, jumper breaker box that I will need to cut a hole into the side of this and mount it so that it kind of sticks out into the van so that I can access it from the interior. And so that'll basically be where all of my uh, regular DC, basically directly from the battery will go there, as well as the high voltage from the inverter will go to that. And then from that breaker box, I will later have to break out and add the different circuits to the lights, the fans. And the last big improvement for today was just again, experimenting with more painting. So this is a truck bed liner. It's got this nice textured finish. And so I've done this to the entire bottom stripe on this side. Um, yeah, and then eventually the, the rest of it will have a light gray paint job and the bottom will have this kind of protective liner all the way around. And again, all the chrome elements, I think I'm going to do in this same Raptor liner bit. So chrome delete. So it'll basically be black and gray truck. Yeah, and uh, yeah, here's the side mirror. I still don't have the other one on. That's just one of these projects that's never getting done. <laughs> but I'll get to it soon enough. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for today, guys. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.